I want to bring to the stage somebody who will go down in the history books and has already gone down in the history books of open source. Open source has just celebrated its 25th birthday formally from the creation of the open source definition and the open source initiative. And it's a rare pleasure to invite to the stage here in the UK the co-founder of the open source initiative, Bruce Perrins. <laughs> So uh, I created the open source definition, the rules for open source licensing that still stand today. And uh, so I've been here not since the start of free software, that was 40 years ago. But for the 25 actually, I thought we were coming up on 26. And made the first announcement of open source to the world, I did that. Uh, created BusyBox, possibly the most infringed open source software after the Linux kernel. And it's in all your things and it doesn't come with the source code, but it should. And uh, co-founded the Open Source Initiative. And so, it's, I'm, I'm not the happy speaker. Okay, everyone else is going to tell you how great open source has been. I'm going to tell you how we failed. Uh, and 50 years is wrong, that's a senior moment, sorry. Um, we took over business software though, for a particular set of applications, that's great. We replaced the consortium, you never hear of them anymore, and we've developed so much software. But if you step outside of business, we're not nearly as successful, even inside business we have failures. We have a great, corporate welfare program. Our users are the richest companies in the world. Indeed, we've enabled companies like Google to be created. In contrast, if our developers aren't working for those companies, they probably go uncompensated. Obviously, OpenSSL was the classic example. There's a corporate developer power differential which pushes open source to be unfairly structured to reward corporate licensees rather than us, the licensors who create the software. Support is really the only monetization model that works for pure open source for an independent developer. And there are fundamental problems with it. Developers don't want to be in the support business. They want to write code, users, don't, users want one throat to choke. They don't want hundreds of support vendors, one per product, and then they have to tell each other it's their software that's broken and isolate the problem and convince them they don't want that. So IBM wins service contracts instead of the open source developer because they promise to support all of your software. And this is the one I really hate. Okay, DEI problem. It's, it's not, first of all, that we don't have the women in the minorities. We don't have them because of this. We only write software for people like ourselves. Mm -hmm. System software, very sophisticated applications. Where common folks run our software at all, it's mostly as an enabler of the proprietary software of Google, Apple, etc. So a few projects do make software for common people. Firefox and LibreOffice are obviously great examples. And both projects understand the need to pay some developers to motivate them to write software for other people. Oh, thank you. We have failed to reach the ordinary person. Our software enables them to be surveilled and even oppressed. And some of us lament that users aren't running our software and that they don't appreciate the freedom and the privacy that we offer. And those things are even more important today than they have ever been. But it's not the user's fault. We don't currently offer them a desirable alternative. So this is not an open source versus free software problem. If you've done worse, at reaching the common people than FSF because they're philosophy first rather than user first. Users will consider their immediate needs first. 
We need to write software that they want to use. Philosophy is our job. Some will never understand. Some of those users, they're just not philosophy people. They can't be made to care. Some will in time. We must not let ourselves be put off by that fact. Our licenses aren't working. One third of paid for Linux systems are now sold with a GPL circumvention prohibiting redistribution of source code. That's billions of dollars in business. I've been going to the court to observe the Neo4j case regarding the Commons Clause, which distorts the purpose of open source licensing. That court has invalidated the GPL language prohibiting the addition of terms. They did it in summary judgment. It's reversal, they, it will be appealed, but this is a problem. And the companies that actually want to follow the rules of open source have large departments just for compliance. I spoke with someone yesterday who had worked in a $7 million per year compliance department. Can't we give them something better to do with that money? So moving forward, it's time to think about a different paradigm from open source. One that addresses some of the problems of open source. Open source will continue, must continue. What I'm suggesting must never call it open source. So far I call it post open. It may never happen, this may be a dream, but hear me out. Enable individuals and small entities better than open source does today. Compensate developers fairly for their work. Motivate developers to write for the common person by paying them. Compliance must be a once and done for the year process. So how can we do that? I, by the way, am not building a fiefdom. I'm 66 years old. I've had cancer for 30 years. I still feel great, but I won't be around to run this. And so you will be. Compliance costs more than we want from companies. So we can get them to pay us. They need software that's sustainable. Entities over a specific end user revenue, I'm thinking maybe $5 million, or that wish to keep a modification private would pay and they need to audit what software they use, perform, and redistribute once a year. Why would they do that? Because we need to figure out who our contributors are and who we pay. So what we're doing is developing a post open source collection, which would all be under one license, one payment, you get this, the whole thing. Um, payment gets you rights to all post open source software. How do we distribute money? Instrument Git repositories to determine the contributions of individual developers. There's a company that makes software that does this. Some developers, architects, janitors, would have to account for hours to be compensated fairly. Just one license, one contract for paid users, one operating agreement for developers, a few companies that collect money and distribute it to developers. This is a big PR problem and contrary to how open source has worked so far. You need a company that you can trust or maybe a few companies and you can pick the one you like. If it forks in too many ways, it won't work for anyone. If we do this, we can operate support as one entity for all post open developers and provide the user with one throat to choke. Return those support funds to the developers so that they get paid for maintenance. Earmark some funds for development of user software, enforcement, lobbying, education, the things that we can't do today and that the corporations do often not in our interest. Keep your software as available as open source, but if you dual licenses post open too, you get paid when users pay for the entire post open collection. Those users get easier compliance. There are lots and lots of problems with this, but getting buy-in 
and preventing it from forking a dozen different ways is probably the worst. Antitrust, if we hit it, we're doing really well. And it's a big stretch compared to open source, but when we started open source, if I had told you about it, you would have thought I was just as crazy as you might today. So what's happening? I put out a grant request for $100,000 of legal work and half a year for me to develop draft policies and processes. This won't be to operate it. There will be community involvement in the development. If that doesn't come through, I have several companies offering to fund the process, but staying independent is going to be awfully important. So this is a radical idea, departing from open source after 25, almost 26 years, doing something else. But maybe it's time. Maybe we can do things better than we do today. Maybe we can reach the people that we need to help. Thanks very much.